When it comes to trees that I often get asked about, the oaks are near the top of the list. And why wouldn't they be? Oaks are super important to a variety of critters as a food source, as host plants to a huge number of caterpillar species, they produce important forest products, and are just super cool trees in general. One of the best known of our eastern oaks is the white oak, Quercus alba, which has a large native range in eastern North America and can be found growing in hardwood forest on dry slopes to lowland woods with deep, loamy, moist, slightly acidic, well-drained soils. White oak is a large tree and is normally from 50 to 135 feet tall with a 50 to 80 foot crown spread at maturity. Its growth form varies as the tree ages with young trees having a pyramidal shape and older trees having a broad rounded crown. If you love learning about our awesome eastern oaks, like the white oak, pretend that like button is a ripe white oak acorn and bury it like a squirrel. The species white oak, Quercus alba, sort of confusingly, is also a member of a group of oaks collectively known as white oaks. So what exactly makes a particular oak a member of the white oak group? There are two key features that all species in the white oak group share. First, they produce acorns that mature in one season, so there are only a single season's acorns on the tree at one time, and most species in the white oak group also have acorns that sprout soon after they mature and drop in the fall. Secondly, the lobes or teeth on the leaves have rounded, blunt tips. If an oak species meets these two criteria, it is in the white oak group. Now back to our discussion about THE white oak, Quercus alba. White oak leaves are normally four to nine inches long and two to four inches wide, with deep sinuses that may nearly reach the midrib, and seven to 10 finger-like, rounded tipped, narrow lobes per leaf. Leaf color is bright green above and whitish to light gray below with mature leaves smooth on both sides. Leaves will vary in shape somewhat from tree to tree and even on the same tree. Seedlings typically have leaves with much shallower lobes. Fall color is variable in reds, yellows, or browns. The bark is whitish to light ashy gray and has narrow, shallow furrows that divide it into vertical plates or blocks which will become loose and scaly, eventually flaking off in vertical strips as the tree ages. The acorns are elongated and three quarters to one inch long with a shallow cap that covers approximately one quarter to one third of the nut. Caps are lumpy, light tan to gray with warty scales. Acorns start out green but ripen to a light brown when they drop from September to November and the sweet acorns are highly palatable to wildlife and quickly consumed. Key features for quickly identifying white oak are the combination of its distinctive deeply lobed leaves and the scaly whitish bark. Some species you may confuse with white oak are bluff oak, Quercus astrina, which tends to have smaller acorns that are darker when ripe and its leaves have fewer, more shallow lobes. The durand oak, Quercus sinuata, variety sinuata, which has a covering of dense, tight hairs on the lower leaf surface. The swamp white oak, Quercus bicolor, which has an obvious white, felt-like covering of hairs on the lower leaf surface. The bur oak, Quercus macrocarpa, which has leaves with a noticeable waist and a thin covering of small hairs on the lower surface, and huge acorns with a fringed cap. And the introduced English oak, Quercus rober, which has an eared or heart-shaped leaf base. I thought I'd do something a little bit different with this video and do the identification sections kind of in a video field guide style. Let me know down in the comments how you like this style of video and if I should do more of them in the future. White oak is one of the largest species in the white oak group and one of the most important timber species. The wood of white oak is used to make barrel staves for whiskey barrels, and white oak barrels are required by law for the barreling and aging of bourbon. Unfortunately, over many parts of its range, white oak has been declining from lack of oak regeneration after logging due to competition with invasive species, lack of prescribed fire, lack of active forest management, and the often overabundant white-tailed deer's taste for young white oak sprouts. Oaks are considered keystone tree species in North America due to their importance to wildlife as a mass producer, the huge number of caterpillar species that use it as a host plant, and the wide array of songbirds that rely on those caterpillars to feed themselves and their young. As awesome as oaks are to the web of life in eastern North America, there are other groups of trees that are also keystones within that web. And you can learn all about them in this video, and be sure to get out and explore nature in your backyard.